In 2021, the Utah Division of Oil, Gas, and Mining's Abandoned Mine Reclamation Program, or AMRP, was notified of a fire at the reclaimed Kenilworth coal mine in Carbon County. After evaluating the site, the staff determined there was no immediate danger and established a fire monitoring program. In August 2024, concerned residents notified the program of a significant increase in smoke coming from the hillside above Kenilworth. Due to the steep terrain and unknown hazards, AMRP partnered with the Division of Forestry, Fire, and State Lands to investigate the site using a helicopter. They found a large vent hole that had opened into the smoldering mine below. The vent hole appeared, appears to be in a subsidence hole that collapsed into the mine working, so it's above the actual mine. It opened up into the mine workings that seemed to be on fire. The increased smoke from the vent hole and the proximity to the town of Kenilworth posed an immediate hazard, requiring emergency action. AMRP quickly hired an engineering firm specializing in coal mine fires to assess the situation and develop a mitigation plan. We were uh, tapped by uh, Utah DNR to assist with another project in Carbon County. About a month later, we transitioned pretty quickly uh, with a phone call from Steve Fluke with uh, the Kenilworth Project to transition basically all of our efforts uh, to, to the Kenilworth Project itself. So heavy research, lots of desktop studies, understanding the history, understanding the uh, the mine complex effectively is usually where we get started. Uh, mine maps are a very big deal. Understanding the mine maps, understanding the, uh, the portal locations and how everything's uh, intertwined um, certainly gives you a, a big uh, indication of, of where to go, where to start uh, with respect to a design. The potential for dangerous gases in the steep terrain and instability of the ground near the subsidence made direct access to the vent site very difficult. Instead, the team used drones to collect photos, videos, and thermal imaging to evaluate the extent of the fire, monitor conditions, and guide the response plan remotely. So drones played a large role, um, obviously with the topography that we have here, um, you know, it's not easy to hike up there. So obviously we try to, to utilize as much remote sensing as possible to, to really understand the dynamics with respect to what was happening from a thermal component. Also, you know, if it's growing, understanding, you know, the, the development of it over time. Um, monitoring it on a regular basis was very critical to everything that, that we needed with respect to information for design. To keep the community informed and engaged, AMRP held a public meeting to explain the situation and outline the steps being taken to ensure public safety. And then when they called in the meeting, uh, they were very kind and showed the maps and showed what was going on and explained it um, really well so that we felt comforted because it's kind of scary to look up, see your mountain on fire. <laughs> yeah. After we held a public meeting, we set up a, an email update for the community where we gave weekly updates on the uh, actions that we were taking and um, the progress of the, the fire and just to communicate anything that we needed to. The health department also lent their expertise through air quality sampling to assess potential health risks. This meeting also helped AMRP by providing community input and observations about the fire. And we presented that to the uh, community of Kenilworth at a town hall meeting and were told by one of the uh, community members of the uh, Castle Gate number two at it that was drawing large volumes of air, and could that be related? And so we went, took a look, and it was sucking a lot of air. And yes, it, it is connected, and although it was three miles away, it was part of the old ventilation system for the mine. So we knew we had to seal that as well. And we also then went and looked at, at some of the other ventilation tunnels, and we found two more that were drawing large volumes of air. AMRP collaborated closely with the local community, relying on historical mine maps and legacy knowledge from old miners to locate all the openings involved. The first step in mitigating the fire was to cut off the air supply feeding the flames. This required identifying all potential intake portals scattered throughout the historic mine complex. With a clear plan in place, AMRP hired a construction crew to seal the intake portals. These efforts required meticulous planning, as the work sites were often remote and difficult to reach. 
with many accessible only by helicopter. During the first phase of the work, contractors sealed the air intake portals with fire retardant foam, which significantly reduced the smoke at the main vent, shifting it from black to white, a clear sign that the plan was working and the air intake and intensity of the fire were successfully reduced. Drones and ongoing thermal imaging continued to play a vital role in tracking the progress of the mitigation efforts. Once all the identified intake portals were sealed, the hazards at the vent site were greatly reduced and crews were able to safely access the main vent. Safety remained a top priority, with specialized training provided to anyone working in the proximity of the dangerous gases near the vent site. In order to plug the vent hole, we injected over 200 cubic yards of foam, so that's about 20 dump trucks of foam down into that hole, which led into the mine workings before it actually plugged up itself and ultimately sealed it up and, and stopped the smoke. While crews eliminated the smoke from the vent, the fire continues to burn underground. Plans are being developed to fully extinguish the fire, preventing future vent holes from opening and protecting the community from further risk. The rapid response exemplified the mission of the Utah Abandoned Mine Reclamation Program by prioritizing public safety and environmental protection. The fast mobilization and effective coordination between AMRP, the Office of Surface Mining, Forestry, Fire, and State Lands, local fire departments and law enforcement, and the community allowed this project to be completed before the winter weather made it more difficult or postponed the project until spring. The success of this effort also raised public awareness about the dangers of abandoned mines and the critical role of programs like the Abandoned Mine Reclamation Program and Safeguarding Communities. The innovative foam sealing technique used during this project is already being considered for future projects, showcasing its broader usefulness. This project illustrates how the Utah Abandoned Mine Reclamation Program used rapid mobilization, innovative problem solving, and the power of community collaboration to mitigate the adverse effects of dangerous situations that result from abandoned coal mines.